The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it, they know. They took that one step beyond. Lisa Garrick, age 11, reluctant ballerina. How nice to be 11 in the wonderful world of 1901. A world of peace and security, and for little girls, fun. No reason for it to ever change. No reason that Lisa knew of. Um. I didn't mean to pry. I was only passing. That's all right, Abby. I don't blame you for watching. Oh, she's a picture. She's so lovely. I can close my eyes and almost see her mother. Yes, she has the same grace, the same love of life. Now, let's do. Mademoiselle Garreau, I'm tired. Couldn't I rest for a minute? Tired? We just started. A ballet dancer tired? That is not possible. Come on, come on, come on. Daddy! <laughs> oh, hey, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Catching that leap that way. <laughs> what do you think, Mademoiselle Garreau? Would I make a good partner for this prima ballerina? Or do you think I'm starting a little late? <laughs> Daddy, don't have that idea with me. Well, you can oh, do it. No, come on, well, stop, 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 Lisa. Your father is much too old for that kind <laughs> of foolishness. <laughs> Mademoiselle Garreau is quite right. As a ballet dancer, I'm afraid I'm past my prime. Now, you go right ahead with your lesson, and I'll watch from over here. Let's show the turns to your father. Uh, Annette, please, la grande valse brillante. Go to the center of the floor, please. Ready? Begin! Faster! Faster! That's better. Faster! Has she ever suffered from vertigo, dizzy spells, faintness, that sort of thing? Never, Dr. Parsons. She's always been a healthy child. She's never been sick. She doesn't seem to have struck her head when she fell, but she certainly has sustained some kind of shock, probably some infantile hysteria. But I tell you, Dr. Parsons, she isn't the sort of child. Daddy! 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 Lisa. Lisa, darling, what is it? Young lady. The 
chandelier. It tore out of the ceiling on top of me. On top of Lisa, me. Lisa, the chandelier didn't fall. It's dead, Daddy. It's dead. It fell on top of me. Honey, you just imagined it. Daddy, you've got to believe me. Hey, listen. It came out of the ceiling. Lester and the wood cracked all to pieces. Honey, I saw the chandelier only a few moments ago. It's right where it's always been. Daddy, I saw it. Please listen. It came out and it smashed and, and it jangled and I was under it. Daddy, I was under it. All right, all right. Now, 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 young lady, I think we've heard enough of that, don't you? You had a dizzy spell and you fainted. Now I want you to rest and sleep. And when you're all calmed down, you'll see that it was just your imagination. Oh, here we are. It came out of the ceiling. Thank you, Abby. Plaster in the wood cracked all to pieces. Daddy, I saw it. I saw it. All right, honey, I believe you. Uh, here, Lisa, let me see you take this. It'll help you rest. Get some sleep now. You promise. I'll try, Daddy. Good girl. Give her another one tomorrow if she has trouble sleeping, but I don't believe she will. After a good night's rest, it'll be gone from her mind. Thank you, Doctor. What's the matter? I looked in to see if she was sleeping, and I found her down here, sir. Oh, Daddy. Daddy, I had to stay up. I, I just had to. Why, of course you did, darling. Now, let's have a real look, shall we? Come along, Lisa. No. There. Nothing's going to happen, you see. No, Daddy, no! It wasn't you, it was me! Eat a little breakfast, honey. You'll feel better. I'm not hungry. What is it, darling? Still upset about yesterday? You'll forget about it soon. No, I won't. You know how when you get dizzy, everything kind of spins around? Well, it looks like you got so dizzy doing those turns yesterday that things not only went around like this, but up and down, too. Only down. All right, only down. But it happens to everybody. It's just kind of a trick our imagination plays on us. Daddy, it wasn't my imagination. It was real. Real? 
Yes. But how could it be? The chandelier's still there, isn't it? Yes. And you're here with me, aren't you? Yes, but it was real. Well, all right. That's better. I'm working home today, so maybe we can spend a couple of hours together this afternoon. How about it? I'd like that, Daddy. Come on, Abby, throw them to me. Well, I'm sending them right. It just doesn't do those where it has a mind to. Oh, oh, Abby, no, that's all wrong. You've got to throw it overhand. Well, all right, I'll try it. Oh, oh. Did you find it? Lisa, what's taking you so long? Would you call Miss Lisa for me, please, Abby? To come in here, sir? Yes, please. Why, well, she won't come in this room, Mr. Garrick. You know that, sir. She hasn't been in this room in more than ten years. Abby, please, call her. Well, what do you say, Ed? He's as sound as a dollar, Mr. Garrick. It would take an earthquake to move her. She's as strong as the day she was put in. If she'd moved at all, there, there would have been cracks in the plaster, and there isn't any. And there's no rust on the metalwork. She's as sound as a dollar, Mr. Garrick. You're absolutely sure. Yes, sir. There's a little trap in the ceiling that leads to where she's anchored. I inspected all the fittings, and there's no rust on the metalwork. <laughs> she, she's as strong as the day she was put in. If she'd moved at all, there, there would have been cracks in the plaster, and there isn't any. <laughs> I'd say it, it would take an earthquake to move her. All right, thank you, Ed. <laughs> thank you. Me, Daddy? Yes, Lisa. You remember Ed Matthews? Of course. How are you, Mr. Matthews? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. You look lovely every time I see you, Miss Garrick. Thank you. It has gone all over the chandelier from top to bottom. Daddy, please. Oh, oh, the chandelier was put up there to stay, Miss Garrick. Uh, it would take an earthquake right, to move it. Thank it, you it, very much. I'll talk to you later. Oh, oh, sure, Mr. Garrick. Sure. Excuse me, Miss. Now, uh, you see, darling, you believe me now, don't you? If anything were wrong, Ed Matthews would have found it. Daddy. Lisa, listen to me. You're not a child Daddy, any longer. please! Lisa? May I come in? Certainly, Daddy. George is downstairs. Already? Golly, I'd better hurry. Where are you going? To the opera with Louise and Melissa. Why don't you all come back here afterwards for a late supper? I'm sure Abby and Mrs. Wilson would be happy to prepare something for you. Thank you. Maybe we will. Could you fasten me, please? Certainly. Oh, you look perfectly charming. Thank you. Darling, I have a request to make of you. I'm not going to demand it because I respect your feelings. I know you do, Daddy. You always have, and I'm very grateful. You know, for generations, the women of my family have made their debuts in the ballroom. This is a special occasion. Not only your debut, but the announcement of your engagement as well. It just wouldn't seem right to have it anyplace else, would it? No, I suppose it wouldn't. I know it's childish, but I just can't help it. I can't. I just can't. It's still so vivid to me. Lisa, darling girl. Do you think for one moment I would contemplate the possibility of endangering the life of my child? Not to mention my guests. <laughs> of course I wouldn't. In the ten years since your experience, the chandelier hasn't budged in its moorings a fraction of an inch. If there was the slightest sign of weakness, Ed Matthews would have found it. Yes, I'm sure he would have. 
if he could see it. But how do we know? Well, we don't, of course. We don't know where the horse will run away. We don't know where lightning will strike. We don't know what deadly germs are in the very air we breathe. But we can't very well organize our lives around such fears, can we? No. Darling, it means a great deal to me. Have you spoken to George about this? Well, you don't have to give me your answer now, but will you think about it? Yes, Daddy, I'll think about it. Thank you. That's all I ask. Daddy. I'll try. I promise. Good girl. Miss? I'm sorry, George. Ready? <laughs> I have been for years. Daddy talked to me tonight about having the engagement party in there. Mm-hmm. What did you tell him? I told him I'd think about it. You think I'm being very foolish, don't you? <laughs> I think you're beautiful. Adorable and just a little foolish. Well, maybe I am. I don't know. I really don't know. Are there any more potatoes? I'll see if I can find you some more, sir. Again, Mark. Don't you realize there's a limit to the capacity of the human body? Yes, but that's exactly what I'm trying to find out, the limit. Now, don't scoff. This is in the nature of a scientific experiment. Well, at the rate you're going, your life will become a martyr to science. <laughs> you are prepared, I assume, to die, if need be, for the service of your cause? Of course. And what a glorious death that would be. The victim of a final filet mignon or of an innocent but lethal brook trout. <laughs> That's ridiculous, dying from overeating. I should think it would be very untidy. Oh, not a bit. At any rate, that's just the way I want to go, indulging myself to the very last. Mm. How about you, Evan? Wouldn't you like to die like that? No, oh, no, not me. I want to go in my sleep when I least expect it. And then all my relatives will be shocked, particularly when they read my will and find I died penniless. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Melissa? Oh, I want to go in great style. Painlessly, of course. In a great silken bed with all my grandchildren around me weeping softly. Oh, I know. And with muted strings playing softly in the background. That's better than dying with your stomach full. How about you, Lisa? What? Well, how would you like to die? I know how I'm going to die. Oh, how's it how in the world can she know in the world she can know? And Lisa rightfully believes that at the appointed time a special deputation of angels and archangels Please, will George. come down. Well, don't you think that's just as likely to come from on high as something falling from a stage? Please, George. Did I say something wrong? I was only joking. Of course you were. There was no reason to take it so seriously. Why did you get so upset? It hasn't anything to do with us. Please believe me, it's something that... Well, it, it's hard to explain. I think... I'm sorry, but maybe we'd better leave. Lisa's, well, she's trying to work out a problem. You know, one of those... 
things. If you think so, George, far be it from us to intrude. Well, anyway, it's getting late, and Father will be furious and if I don't come home soon. Thanks, Melissa. Tell Lisa I hope she feels better tomorrow. Oh, I'm sure she will. It's just... At least we could have finished eating. Really, Martin, you're always thinking about your stomach. Good night, George. Good night, George. Good night. I'll say your goodbyes to Lisa for you. engagement right here. No. Yes. No. And I'm going to dance a waltz with my own beloved Garrick woman from one end of this room to the other. George, I beg you not to. No. Dance with me. No, George, no. Dance with Please, me. Please, I beg you not to. Listen, Lisa. Was I in your vision? Did the chandelier fall on me, too? No. Well, as long as you're in my arms, it can't fall. <laughs> That's Lisa. But it's no longer 1901. Now it's 1947, June 12th. And this wonderful party is for Lisa's granddaughter, who tonight is making her debut. So Lisa's premonition of disaster was all wrong. her namesake danced beneath it, the great chandelier fell, just as Lisa had seen it fall many years ago. The premonition came true two generations later. To whom it happened, we know. Where it happened, we know. How or why it happened. But I'm not quite ready to say good night. Reading from left to right, Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. Dolls? Yes, but not nearly so innocent as they seem. Next week, they take over the life of a lonely little girl with devastating results. <laughs> <laughs> 